Yo, 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 what is up, Hope? It's your friend Damian Howard here. I'm reminded at the top of our time today of what Solomon stated in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 9. Whatever has been will be again. Those things that were done will be done again. We got to be reminded, Solomon closes, that there is nothing new under the sun. I believe that that particular text is very instructive for us today as we flow into a conversation concerning Dr. Martin Luther King. I know that you all have taken opportunity to really celebrate cultural nuances and the historical genius of folks who have come before us. I love the reminder that comes to us from Solomon, one of, if not the wisest person to live, that there is nothing new under the sun. Because I hope, if nothing else, that as you all are hearing all of these inspirational words, these sage ideas, the lived experience from people who have come before us, that you all are understanding in the mindset of Solomon that there is nothing new under the sun. Yes, there is unique creativity and ingenuity inside of each and every one of you. But what I'm saying here is that as we learn of all of these amazing things that people historically were able to accomplish, when we look at what Solomon said in Ecclesiastes and we start to understand that these two were human beings that were inspired and empowered in a special way to do the things that they did, whoa, then we can get to the point and say, hey, God, what is it that you've put inside of me? What is it maybe that you've inspired me to do? Listen, I see all of these soup, what we would think of as supernatural type of things and exploits that these people were able to accomplish. But Solomon, in his words, helps us to be encouraged, helps us to understand that you are fearfully and wonderfully made as well. And the same way that things were done in the past that can shift the conscientiousness and the conscious of an entire nation. Guess what? You're somebody special who has unique capacity inside of you as well. I'm so elated because you all know hope. We have a special place in each other's hearts and in each other's lives. Every time I get an opportunity to share with you all, it's just such a genuine experience, such a unique opportunity. And today I've been tasked to use MLK, as we reflect upon Martin Luther King as an acronym to discuss three attributes of his life that are going to, in the next moments of our lived experience, remind us that there are certain ways right now that, that we can resolve to use what it is that God has put inside of each of us to be kingdom oriented people who are committed to using our lives. Do you hear me? To do good in the earth to serve those people around us, to make impact in our spheres of influence. And guess what? The more y'all get this, and I'm, all I'm doing here is just reminding you all of what you already know, reminding you of what has already been invested inside of each and every one of us. Guess what? The more that you serve, the more that you live a life that's less about you and for the benefit and good of others as you are inspired by the Holy Spirit, the beautiful part about that is that you start to be fulfilled in ways that you could have never imagined being satisfied, satiated, <laughs> feeling good before. It's just a new life that God is able to open up for you when it becomes less about you and more about his kingdom work. MLK. Let's deal with that M first. The M, you all, we're going to use that to stand for mobilize. Come on. Y'all know me, I like engagement and I need engagement. The engagement helps me to feel my mojo. I need everybody right now with that M to say mobilize in your own space. I don't care if you're in your home looking at the computer, say mobilize. I love that this M came to mind for me because mobilizing, if you're going to be a person that's able to mobilize other individuals, that means that you understand that you're an individual who has influence nestled inside of you. 
We got to get to a place whereby we understand that nothing of significance is going to be done. Not great stuff that God has put in me is not going to be done if I'm trying to do life on my own. So as somebody who starts to understand, man, I have a voice box, man, I have a special gift whereby people follow, people listen. And once you figure that out and you tap into that, right, with whatever your giftedness is, now you can start mobilizing people so that together you all can execute a vision that's less about you, more about the kingdom. And that's going to impact you all school It's going to impact your home communities. And here's the beauty about what this generation understands. You all know better than even my generation did that you don't have to wait until you turn 20, 30, 40 something to make a massive impact. That right there in you all's age as teenagers, you have the ability to mobilize and shift the culture based on what you have inside of you. Everybody M stands for mobilize. That L, and you could probably already anticipate that this is leadership. <laughs> This is leadership, leader, leadership, leader, leadership. I believe that there is a special right, gift that we've all been given, regardless of who we are, regardless of socioeconomic status and stature. Why? Because in scripture, when it talks about one being the hand and one being the head and one being an eyeball, it means that the whole body collectively needs each individual part to lead as it has been specially functioned and made to lead so that the body can do what the body is supposed to do. So I need you to really take a moment and dig down deep and ask yourself, how am I to lead? What type of leader am I inspired to be? What is my part? That doesn't necessarily mean that I'm always the one on the stage with the microphone. But when you are not given the microphone, right? How can you learn to lead from whatever seat that God has you in in this juncture of your life? M-L-K, M-L-K. <laughs> All right, so the K um, as we close here stands for knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. So you all know that I am Mr. S-E-L, social and emotional learning. And if you're going to be somebody who is able to mobilize others as a person of influence, if you're going to, from your place of influence, grow to be a leader with the unique giftedness that you've been given. Now, this K is saying, hold on, come on, let's slow back. Let's slow down a little bit. Let's let's back up a little bit. Do you know yourself? Do you have like a real depth of knowledge concerning being aware of who you are? Do you know your strengths? Do you know how you are uniquely gifted? Do you know, right, what talents that you have the ability to chisel, to continue to practice so that through an intimate knowledge of who you are, you can know what it is you need to be spending your time on? Y'all probably already heard me uh, talk about this, but I'm going to say it again. Listen, we have these little mini computers, namely these cell phones, and we can get on here all day and go see what other people are talking about on YouTube. Go and see what other people have given us access to through Google on any topic. I want us to get obsessed on the topic of me, on the topic of I. What is my giftedness? What are my strengths? How am I uniquely given a, a special capacity to make impact in the world. Know yourself, learn of yourself, inquire, ask other people what they think about you and take all of that stuff into special consideration so that you, so that you can continue the work of growing into the best version of yourself. Listen, y'all, I am right here at my time, so I just simply ask for you all to take action as it pertains to thinking through what special influence you have to mobilize other people. L, come on. My question is very specifically, how have you been resourced and empowered to be a leader? And then lastly, come on, we're dealing with this K that actually should have been first. Self-knowledge. What more learning, what more inquiry do you need to do concerning yourself so that with a more depth of knowledge concerning who you are, now you are even further empowered to be the person God has made you to be. Y'all, it is your boy, Damian Howard, signing off. 
Peace out. I appreciate each one of you.